So hybrid HPC is probably one of the most uh, requested topics I, I've come across. A lot of people are seeing it as, as a way to, to gain capacity. Don't, don't look at hybrid HPC as we are going to duplicate our existing cluster and have everyone be able to use what's in the cloud. That, there be dragons. I think the summary for this talk is there are multiple areas where you, you know, you, your understanding of your workloads, your users and your cluster and its behavior, its day-to-day -day sort of diurnal cycles should help you make some decisions that will make your life immensely easier when coming to try and do a hybrid scenario. Is that a good summary for very hybrid good. HPC? It's a very good summary, yeah. Yeah, look at it from a workload perspective. That, that's what yeah. should drive it. That's going to drive data, that's going to drive your application, your, your, your cost. Everything. Yeah. So I kind of want to make sure we're, we're on the same page in terms of a definition of hybrid, because I think a lot of people have different definitions. And this is going to be my opinion, um, but I, I think it's a good opinion. What most people think of when they talk about hybrid HPC is just some sort of extension of their current cluster. Um, I'm going to talk a lot around Slurm just because that's what's in parallel cluster, but this is all applicable to other HPC schedulers. So the, the idea here is that, you know, they're going to be run, running some sort of Slurm head node on premises, maybe multiple clusters, but you've got some scheduler there and you want that scheduler to handle provisioning capacity in the cloud. Maybe that is, you know, through parallel cluster itself, maybe it's calling out to batch. EKS, maybe it is, you know, just, you know, spinning up EC2 instances with some sort of API or CLI. Yep. But the point is you have sort of this on-prem scheduler that is aware of the cloud. The other thing, and, and this is a, a very loaded statement, there's a lot to unpack in there, but they, they kind of want some sort of managed data movement. Honestly, the, the managed data movement or the inability to manage the data movement or your extraordinary skills at managing the data movement, or perhaps your unbelievably simple needs on data movement, and it could be any one of the, or a mix of all of the above, that's actually probably the right limiting factor in yeah. how easily this whole thing's gonna be, right? Yeah, compute's easy, data is hard. Uh, sort of related to data is is software stacks, because uh, you, you want to somehow replicate that, um, minimize having to constantly rebuild uh, applications. Uh, you, you want this to be very easy, so, uh, yeah, replicating a software. But you can contrive for software to be on uh, two places at once with a single license manager in the middle. You can sort of, yeah. You can you can do some chicanery to make that work. It's yeah. data is a bit more unpredictable. Than yeah. That. yeah. But the 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 end result is when people talk about hybrid, they really want this sort of single pane of glass for their. They want their users to just almost never know they're running in the Frankly, cloud. Frankly, they want magic. They do. That's right. Yeah. The the other one, and, and I kind of alluded to this, is that you that the cloud is is an extension of some sort of data processing pipeline where you're just streaming data off of a, a sequencer, IoT devices, cryoelectron microscope, whatever it might be, and that it's sort of a very application uh, application specific workload. A, a lot of the same, you know, the data transfer and and software stack, all that still applies. It's just that this is in this approach, it's more focused. Right, so some of the challenges, and we, we've kind of talked about this, data transfer is the big one. Yeah. Um, until we can you know, create a managed service that beats the speed of light, we're kind of stuck with physics, and, and we've got to do this. So uh, the, the thing I'd, I'd, I'd say tell people to think about is, do you want this data transfer to be very on-demand, where you've submitted a job, and that job triggers some sort of data transfer? Uh, likewise, when the job ends, does it trigger moving data back? Uh, that's very nice. That's this magic that you talked about. Mm -hmm. But that's going to require a fair bit of engineering and some thought. If you're just going to ship up like a, a you know some mesh files, uh, yep. do burn a bunch of CPU cycles solving it, and then at the end you can do some remote visualization. You don't necessarily have to ship back petabytes of genomic data. Uh, scheduler integration. Uh, you know most of the schedulers do make this fairly easy, or at least have the capability. But there are there can be a lot of knobs to turn. You know, software management. Um, you know the <laughs> challenges of you know what are just the architecture differences. It's not like we have the exact same SKU as what you have in a five year old cluster. So right. uh, you know you may have built for Intel, but maybe you need to build for a newer gen generation of Intel. Maybe there are other compiler flags. 
the the other big challenge I see is for uh, maybe customers with large software estates where they they haven't really invested the effort into having some sort of build system. So they may have lots of applications, but they're just like, it's, it's one of those things that it's a house of cards and don't touch that application. We don't know how to rebuild it. <laughs> Last one, probably the biggest one with software management is, is license management. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, the easy approach is you just split your license pool into two parts, one for the cloud, one for on-prem. But it's easy, but that's potentially quite inefficient. Right, it's inefficient. Right. You're and inflexible too. Yeah. Presumably, what we should be doing is putting in some VPNs, linking back to the home base so that the machines in the cloud can actually connect to the license server in home base and just be part of the same license pool, right? Yeah, and and, and that's entirely possible. And we have customers running this in production. Uh, some other challenges that, that you want to think about um, a big one is user management. So everyone just assumes that because we've got a big shared cluster on premises that, and, and we're running LDAP or Active Directory to manage that, that we have to duplicate that in the cloud. And and I'd argue, give some consideration. Do you need to? What if you can now spin up clusters individually per user? Um, and, and I mean, you really could. So. Yeah. And 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 it may be one user that you need to move off your off your on-premise state because he or she is out yeah. on it or they've got some special needs, right? Yep. So you could find a simple path there. Yeah. Uh, and finally, cost management is probably the big one everyone asks about. So, you know, with data transfer, you know, do you want to archive a bunch of data in the cloud to minimize what you have to ship back? There's, mm -hmm. there's things to consider there. Um, what resources do you scale and when? You know, now that you can create lots of different tiers of, of file systems on demand, Yeah. You, you you don't necessarily have to have all that data in one place all the time. But again, it's going to give, you're going to have to give some thought to your data management plan and where data exists and, you know, what do you spin up on demand to address that and what do you keep static to make your life easy? Because doing all this automatically is, is going to require some engineering effort. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time.